Bingo, I'm Jay Fidel, 3 o'clock rock here on Think Tech. We're doing Community Matters this afternoon. And we have Roger Jelinek, and he is the hmm, founder and progenitor and uh, uh, chief manager, I, you'll tell us the exact title yeah. in a minute, mm -hmm. of the Hawaii Book and Music Festival coming soon. That's what we're calling this discussion, the Hawaii Book and Music Festival coming soon. soon. And don't forget, the and is an ampersand. Take that home to be on the final exam. Okay, Roger, welcome. Okay, first of all, I'm not the founder. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind being corrected, it's okay. <laughs> uh, back in 2004, there were two groups trying to find a, a festival, one for-profit, one non-profit, going for the same sponsors. Both of them asked me to program their festival, unbeknownst to each other. The non-profit one won. Uh, <laughs> good, good choice. And, and uh, so I joined the board and I, I um, programmed it pro bono, which meant 24-7 for six months. Oh, I know how that works. So I said, no thanks, next time. <laughs> so I tried to find someone to run it, and they were too expensive. So I said, okay, I'll do it for half that. Yeah. And so I've, stood, sure I've been something. running it ever since. Yeah. 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 So uh, they, came, they came for you. They yeah. solicited you. Why did they come to you? What did you have to offer them, Roger? Um, I have been Hawaii's only literary agent for the past, since I arrived in 1992, because it's a crazy place to be a literary agent. <laughs> it really is, but yeah. let me ask you exactly yeah. so people know, because yeah. not everybody knows, what can you say a literary agent? A literary agent uh, is either approached or looks for properties to sell to publishers on behalf of authors. Manuscripts. Manuscripts. Yeah and negotiates the contracts and monitors the publishing. So you, so if I'm writing in my, in my back room and I have my, my life work, hopefully it's not too biographic, autobiographical. <laughs> I know people have done that, it doesn't go very far. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like what I've done, I think it's valuable. I call you up and I say, Roger, would you represent me? And right? I'll say no. Okay. Because there's yeah. no market. I, was, I actually make a living, try to make a living doing that. So I can't afford to take on projects that don't sell. So, so I, I can sometimes do editing jobs for people or, or I will do a professional reading, but I don't take on projects that I know are not going to sell in the main market, the books you find in Barnes and Noble. No. Yeah. And that, I, that's my judgment. That depends on that. Well, you, but, yeah. but you, I, I could a, be I am a home you. of lost causes, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Part of the business. Yes. But if I, I wrote a good book now. No, then I would. And I, and I like it, and my wife likes it. My, my little puppy dog likes it, and we I, think that it's really terrific. And I don't I come pay to any attention to whether you like it or not. It's, right, it's, it's you. It, I have to like it. Yeah. I have to do more than like it. I have to do a lot of research as to whether there are books like it out there, uh, what they've sold. There's a huge amount of information now out there available that used, yeah. used to be, who do you know, how do you find out that way? Yeah. Now you can... There's just endless amounts of information. Yeah. So you can zero in on what the possibilities are quite rapidly. Yeah, yeah. well, if you, if you, if know, you, what you're if doing. you know what you're doing, if yes. you've been around doing it. Yeah. So uh, I give you a minute or two. Tell me what you're looking for in a book that you will represent. Um, if in nonfiction, it has to be a new subject or a new treatment of a subject or, or somebody who has extraordinary credentials or great celebrity. Uh, it has to be have a, some kind of commercial appeal. Though university presses are beginning to take a much larger role, so we sell to university presses. Mm -hmm. Fiction, it's, it's a voice. Is it an original voice? Um, am I carried away by it? Do I forget I'm reading? That's kind of judgment. Yeah. But it's very capricious. No, and, and I'm not in New York, so I don't have editors who, who you know, who have authors who don't deliver books on time, run out, have a budget problem, and come to me and say, "If I'll publish that if you give me something that will oh, fill that hole." Negotiable. <laughs> so it's, it's it's a little more difficult. Um, when the Maui Writers Conference was going here, I used to run the publishing program in the conference, and that was my network. I was so going for a long time, yeah, wasn't it? About yeah. fifteen years. Yeah. 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 So uh, being here, being yeah. a literary agent here. It must be very different than being a literary agent in New York City. Very different, yes. What's the difference? The difference is you don't see that community on a daily basis. Um, if I was in New York, I'd be having lunch every day with 
a, a group of editors. I would specialize in a way I cannot specialize here. What does it do for you to have lunch with a bunch of editors? What does it do for you? You, you create relationships. It's like other businesses. It's about relationships. Yeah. You know, uh, I can be as logical as I want, but if I don't have a relationship with an editor, it's going to be really difficult to sell. Right. Yeah. He has to trust you. Yes. He has to trust your judgment. Yeah, your because <clears throat> it's a fear-based um, industry. You're as good as your last success. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. and, well, it's been on a retreat for a long time. It's right now, I think, in a pretty healthy state because the, com the competition from other media is phenomenal. So the level of writing now is extraordinary. And uh, you, you, have to be, you have to be there. I get you know, people who write thrillers about some apocalyptic scenario. And I asked the author, have you watched TV lately? Have you seen a thriller on TV lately? In half an hour, they deliver a most extraordinary adventure and climax. Can you do that in your book? And the answer usually is no. no. It takes a very special talent. Yeah, yeah. but you've got to compete with that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. What about, uh, what about uh, online books? You know, Amazon is so easy. It's a matter of just the, te the technology of getting the book in front of you. you can, I, was in, I was in Portugal. Yeah. I was in Portugal last, last year, and I saw something on Portuguese TV that I wanted to read that. And I took out my cell phone, and bingo, I had the yeah. book in, in like one second. I had the book. Um, that's different. Here's, and that the, makes it here's the problem. Amazon has a superb service called Create Space. Mm -hmm. A lot of writers here use it. But yes, they produce a fairly decent-looking book. Then what? How do you get anyone to find you? Because the thing about Amazon is that every page looks as professional as the last one. Every book looks as appealing as the next one. But if nobody knows that Jay Fidel has written a book. It's all about no, promotion. There is no way. But how do you promote? I don't know. That's, uh, a, no, that's, no. Just, that's a question it's that a changes huge, all the time. And the major publishers, even with successful writers, are now making the authors do most of the promotion. I tell my clients, you will know more about how to publish your book than the publisher will. <laughs> no, no. And, yeah. and it's hard work. It's hard work. It's very hard work. It's well, a, let's yeah. go back to the yeah. Book and Music Festival. So <laughs> it started out with you and books and trying to bring books that had some connection to Hawaii, an author, perhaps? Well, when I started out, Hawaii had the most vigorous regional publishing scene in the country for, because of our isolation and because of the tourist industry. And that got knocked for a total loop by the big recession and by the digital revolution in publishing. Yeah. So now, uh, and, and we lost 17 border stores in one day in 2011. So there's no place to expose books. Uh, so the festival has taken on a really serious, important role in, in giving exposure to authors that they don't get anywhere else. Yeah. You know, uh, you know that now that you say that, I used yeah. to spend so much time yeah. at borders, especially borders. Yes. Um, just ruminating, just it's looking. Not, Amazon is not the same. No, it's not. No. Uh, to take the book off the shelf, yeah, to yeah, look at it, flip yeah. the pages, I mean, it's like you could spend your whole afternoon yeah. doing that. People are beginning to realize that a book is an extremely efficient way of delivering a story. Uh, you can reread, you can go back and forth, you can, you know, it. And so for a while, independent bookstores were losing ground. In fact, a lot of them just went bankrupt, yeah. they're coming back. Not only that, but the younger demographic, which you would assume doesn't read that much, are actually crowding into bookstores again, Isn't into the independent stores, not the big Can you have a stores. reason for that? I think there's an over, overdose on digital, huh. maybe. Huh. What a great no. thought. No. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and as I said, it's a really efficient way of delivering a story, yeah. a very pleasurable way. So how do you play that out at the Book and Music Festival? Um, I, um, we program books that have been published in the last year. So I have a kind of a, like a ready-made program in a sense. Uh, we have, um, we specialize particularly in Hawaiian culture. We've mm -hmm. done that from the beginning. And it just happens that with the immersion programs in schools, you now have a steady stream of kids who go through <coughs> school, through UH, and some of them become scholars and actually get to publish their MAs and PhDs, not only at UH Press, but at a mm -hmm. handful of other uh, houses. So 
they produce books. And they're, they're professional books. They're not that readable for you and me. But I surround them with panels, with people who are articulate. And the panel helps. Yeah. And then there's a, <clears throat> something else has happened, which is the rediscovery of Hawaiian language newspapers and other Hawaiian language sources, which has completely uh, transformed Hawaiian studies and, yeah. the, and the perception of the culture. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this sounds better and better. Yeah. So it's, it's on May 6th Sixth and, and 7th. Yes. And it's in that, that big grassy area behind uh, City Hall oh, there. The civic grounds. Civic grounds. Yeah. Uh, and there's parking in the city yeah, parking it's, lot. It's admission is free. The parking is free. The parking is right there. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, you have a huge, let me, let me reach yeah. over. You have a huge, let me just flash this. We have, both we have sides, 12 venues. Both sides and one side. One side. But I mean, there's an enormous number of yeah. panels and books and authors yeah. and music. Yeah. Enormous. We have 12 venues. Last year we only had seven. You know, it's a, it's a, because we got a, a much better funding this year. The venue is a place where you can sit and listen or yes, watch. Yes, yes. You know, it's specifically themed or uh, there's some obvious connection between what's Give presented. us some examples, will you, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I was just talking about the Hawaiian culture one. That's actually become one of our most popular venues. Uh, we do other uh, venues that are simply authors presenting new books, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Uh, we have uh, some themed pavilions. We have a new one, a food and cookbook pavilion that the Pili Group, um, uh, that uh, Chef Yamaguchi has put, put together. Mm -hmm. um, which the, is a the really old uh, ice skating star. Yeah, no, no, this is, this is the chef. Oh, okay, you know, okay, that Yamaguchi, okay. Yes. Um, and that's really interesting because we haven't gone the food and wine festival upscale route. We've gone really uh, what people actually eat at home uh -huh. uh, and what a lot of these new restaurants, farm to table. Are, are so doing. do you have food there? Do you have people yes, cooking food there? Yes, there and demos, uh -huh. even demos for kids. And tasting. And tasting, yes. Oh, that's yes. terrific. So, so that's brand new. That's going to be work very well. We have another one that's uh, um, supported by AARP. They came to us saying, uh, we'd love to do something. And I noticed that their CEO has a new book called Disrupt Aging. So I said casually, why don't you invite the, your CEO here? And they said, oh, great idea. And they did, and now they're terrified <laughs> because they have to perform extraordinarily well. <laughs> um, but uh, that's jo joking apart. We put together seven panels, uh, including one with you and me in it. Yes, I'm looking you know? for, we're in the one on yeah. aging, yeah? Uh, yes. Uh, Disruptive well, aging, is it? We're, we're the one on why, how we change careers um, at a later, later time and do something else <laughs> productive. Let me tell you, it's not so easy. <laughs> no, no. Um, and we have another one on uh, wellness that's supported by HMSA, um, which is seven hot button issues. So for instance, we have uh, a terrific panel on mindful healing um, with a South Korean monk, uh, Hyman uh, Soo-min, whose last book sold three million copies in South Korea. Uh, and he's together with an extraordinary doctor uh, who was trained at Harvard, is now at Mass Gen, who has a very strange power, which is synesthesia. He feels his patient's pain, literally. And he's written a memoir of what it was like to grow up with this. Oh, and be able to hear him talk about that. Yes. For instance, in his introduction, he describes the first time as a resident that he had to attend a dying patient. And he actually felt he was dying. And he had to really will himself back, back to life. This is so interesting yes, and relevant to the Absolute. Death with Dignity bill that, exactly. was just, um, yeah. that just failed yeah. in the House. It was extraordinary. Let's take a short break, yep. Roger. Roger sure. Jelinek, and he is the, <clears throat> not the founder, but a very early contributor and yeah. still active 24 by 7 yeah. for the Hawaii Book and Music Festival coming soon on May 6th and 7th behind City Hall. We'll be right back. We'll talk some more about how this works, why you should go down there, who's going down there, and what you will learn and how your life will change by going down there. We'll be right back. I'm Carol Mon Lee, and I want to welcome you to our newest series called Education Matters, where we will explore education-related topics that touch everyone, not just formal programs in K-12 and higher education, but also broader issues and information that affect our community. 
Aloha, this is Kelee Aquino with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia. I'm the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. It's a program where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. So join us every other Tuesday from 4 o'clock to 4.30. We're live in the studio on Working Together in Think Tech Hawaii. Take care. See you soon. Bye. This no. No. We're back. We're live with Roger Jelen. <coughs> Uh, he is uh, putting on the uh, Hawaii Book and Music Festival uh, coming on May 6th and 7th behind City Hall uh, with uh, 12 venues, right? 12 venues. 12 yes, venues. Yes. And well, 20,000 people coming well, around. 140 separate events. Yeah. 140 events at 12, over, over two days. Yes. And uh, you can eat there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You can park there, too. <laughs> it's like a wonderful there. time. Some people Exercise sleep. your mind there. Yes. Is what it is. Some yeah. people go to sleep under the trees. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. Yeah. No, no. You know, I participated. You yeah. must remember I participated yeah. in an energy panel. Yes. A few years That's ago. right. It was yes. a very pleasant experience yes. to be walking around there yeah. and talking to people there. Yeah. So uh, who's coming? Well, we have uh, our, our major venue is the uh, Mission Memorial Auditorium. It holds 350. It's air conditioned. That's the inside, inside auditorium. One. Yeah. Interesting, people don't like going in, indoors unless there's something very special there. Yes, yeah, because so, everything is happening outdoors. Yes, yeah. and, and festival means outdoors in Hawaii. Yeah. You know? So we take great care to have pretty special things going on there. So we kick off with Patrick Makuakane. Uh, and Connie Hale. Connie Hale has written a book about him. He's the Bay Area avant-garde Kumahula who comes here every two years to do a couple of performances at the Hawaii Theater. And this time there is a book about him. So he'll do, they'll do talk story and demo with his dancers in the Mission Auditorium. That's at 10 o'clock. You know. So much uh, yeah. variety, diversity, yeah. and all kinds from left to right. I mean, you have grown and uh, diversified this yes. program yeah. so that there's yeah. something for everybody. And this, this leads to an interesting question, yeah. if not a challenge. How do I pick where I want to go? There are so many things to see. Which is 140, did you think? Yes. Uh, how do I pick what I want to see? Because I'm gonna, I want to spend time with the good ones. I want to, you know, immerse myself in the good ones. Well, how do I get to the good ones? Well, remember, they're not all Jay Fidel's with immense <laughs> curiosity about everything. <laughs> okay, so, so that solves part of the problem. <laughs> okay. You know? So if you're interested in Hawaiian, Hawaiian culture, you're likely to go to the Hawaiian culture. If you're interested in music or hula, you're going to go to that. Uh, if you're interested in literature, you're going to go to those. Um, and, but there are people who are torn because there's, it's all com 12 venues competing at the same time which I tell the presenters, you're competing with 12 other venues, so make it a good show. <laughs> no, we, uh, we insist that every presentation, uh, every, they go by the hour, that 15 to 20 minutes has to be dedicated to Q&A, so we make it as interactive as possible. Um, oh, that's very good, and then on the, it wakes uh, people up. You can, uh, you can get to our website, Hawaii Book and Music Festival, yeah. not Ampersand, A-N-D. Oh, oh, okay, okay, because uh, Ampersands are hard to put a title yeah, on our yeah, website. No, yeah. uh, .com, uh, and you will see the hour by hour what you, what's available, this as well good. as bios of all the presenters, as well as a map, as well as a schedule. Oh, the map is good. We have a downloadable schedule as well. So I can do research and figure out where yeah. I want to go, and yeah. I can make yeah. my choices in exactly. advance. Here's yeah. a piece from the yeah. website now. Yeah. 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 So, um, okay, so I, I, I figure out where I want to go. I spend the time. Should I, should I wait the whole panel out, or should I move along, say, in the middle of it? Um, uh, it's entirely up to you. We don't chain you to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> but we find in practice very few people move around. Uh, once it, once they made a decision, they don't move around much. Big no. question, yeah. Roger. Yeah. Should I prepare for this? I mean, this is a mind expander, right? Yes. I'm yeah. there to learn things I would never have known. I'm there to meet people, hear people talk about things I haven't heard before. Do I have to prepare? Should I prepare? Should uh, I study? Um, it depends on your personality, really. You know, do you go to, do you study before you go to Barnes and Noble? No, I study at Barnes and Noble. There you are. So that's one answer. Uh, if you want to get the most out of a, a, a novelist, say Kauhi Hart Hemmings has a novel coming out, 
and she'll do a reading and she'll talk story about why she wrote this particular nice to book. Meet her. It was a and you very can meet interesting her, and they all do book. signings afterwards at Barnes and Noble or their pu local publisher. Yeah. But it would probably you probably get more out of it if you read the book ahead of time. A lot of people come and read the book; they get it signed after they've read the book. So there are books for sale. Yeah. I mean, an author is likely you permit this. The, the author would bring the book, and I would ask for an, or, an autograph and get one. Yeah. Yes, uh, all the all the presenters who have new books have a place to sell the books, either at Barnes and Noble or their local publisher, or if they're independent publishers, if they've self-published, there's a venue for that as well. Yeah. What about kids? Is this something for kids? Huge I mean, amount, almost uh, 25, 30% of the program is for kids. And what, what grade, what, what age? From toddlers to you and me, no. Um, uh, what, the are they there, what are they the, there for? The Cakey stage has 28, they go by half hour, they have 28 entertainers, music, music. We have Mr. Steve, who's a national host for PBS Kids, who's a Pied Piper. He, he performs <laughs> six times. He comes from, from Connecticut every year. Uh -huh. and, and people line up before to, to, for him. No. And Jeff Gear, our and friend Jeff, Jeff Gere, well, he, he can uh, This year kids. we have a, a, a whole venue dedicated to professional storytellers. Sure. Not necessarily for kids. That's just It's for adults, actually. You know, maybe... Adults only, who knows, <laughs> no. Um, but these are professional storytellers. And I've put in three plays into, the, into that venue as well. You know, uh -huh. One is, comes from UH, it's a Japanese Kyojin. It's a satire called Derailed. So you wonder what that's about. Um, and then uh, there's a, another play from the actors group, which is about Muslim issues, Muslim in America. It's called Disgraced. And then there's an improv Hawaii play, which is an improv, long-form play. We don't know what that's about. We won't know until you get there. Yeah. This is a real festival. Yes. You yeah. go there and, you know, your eyes are wide open yeah. and all yeah. this. So. Um, just, uh, you know, if, if, I, if I go on, a, on the 6th, you think it'll draw me in to stay on the 7th? Uh, I mean, Should I plan it's, two days here? It's really interesting. We do a, an on-site uh, survey, yeah. and more and more people stay longer, and more and more people go both days. Mm -hmm. There's one wonderful venue that we've had right from the beginning, which is the Bank of Hawaii provides a book swap. You can bring five gently used books and exchange them for five new ones, and they buy a lot of new books for it. And you can at, do at no you, cost. I mean, no just cost. even Stephen. Even Stephen yeah. at no cost. And there's even a cookbook swap. <laughs> three local cookbooks for three local that's cookbooks. Very, that's very, what a bargain that is, yes, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and then friends of the library are there selling books very cheaply. Uh, the state library has become a major partner for us now. They, they have a big presence there this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they need to get out, yeah, too. Yeah. But it strikes me that despite <laughs> all the, the, you know, the cultural stuff and the panel stuff and the music stuff and the food stuff, you're really after trying to make people understand about the written word and books and literacy and expanding your mind. And that would be the core, wouldn't it? Well, yes, but it's very Hawaii-focused. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a double-edged sword because it can become provincial. Uh, it's, it's the result of the fact that New York publishers do not send authors here. The, the standard model for a, a book festival is big-time authors promoting their books sent by publishers free to the, fe to the festival, whether it's in Texas or Portland or New York or wherever. They don't do that here. Right, no market. No, it's too Small expensive. Market. It's too expensive. Oh, the airfare. Too expensive, and also there are no bookstores yeah. you know, to show the books, to yeah. sell but, the but, books. But you are bringing them here anyway, we somehow. Here anyway. How do you get them to come? We pay, f we pay them. Oh, good of you. Yeah. But, I mean, we need that. We need to have yes, them here. Exactly. We need to have their fresh thinking. We need to yes. touch them and see them. Yeah, that's why I said it's a double-edged sword. I, I'm trying to increase the number of authors we bring in every year. You know, you know. I, so, I we, for instance, this year we have a guy who's written the best book on U.S.-China history, the history of the U.S. and China. Uh, we have Joanne Jenkins we've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. we have She's the one with AARP. AARP. She's the national CEO of AARP. We have uh, three wonderful novelists who've, who've gotten rave reviews across the country uh, for, just for fun and for interest. Um, we have this doctor I mentioned, the one with the synesthesia. Well, feel another, your pain. Another, another, <laughs> uh, I want to meet him. Thing, you know. um, 
<laughs> See who else? Probably feel my pain. I'll ask him, what is my pain today? And he'll tell me. He it's will. like mind reading, body reading. Yes. <laughs> he will. So uh, I guess, you know, what, what comes to me is, uh, is this. Um, think Tech should be there. We want to be there. I hope you'll let us come with cameras. Absolutely. And direct us to, you know, good panels. We'd be mostly interested yep. in panels, but also authors. And we, we actually have a videographer and, and, uh, and also a still photographer. If you'd like to be our videographer, I'd be delighted to work with Let's you. talk. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Because, I mean, we, we consider this right in the channel for yep. us. Yep. Um, this is the kind of thing we want to bring to people. They don't okay. get a big chance to do it. This is only once a year you do this festival. And uh, we'd like to have it on film so that they can see it maybe at other times, okay. put it on YouTube in pieces. So there's a we lot of We even have a grant for a videographer, and we'll contribute that to Think Tank. You know, he's yeah. on, he's on uh, tape now. We, we're getting this, uh, <laughs> we're documenting <laughs> what he used to say. <laughs> but I also, you know, I also want to go there and talk to the yeah. people. I want to, um, you know, help you expose it. Okay. I think it's very important. It's a perfect location. My earlier experience. You'll get a lot of good. people there who will be good for your show down the line. That's, yeah, that was my next point. Yes, I, yes. I'd like to get some of them down yeah, if yeah, they're here. Yeah. Will they be here for a while? I mean, will we have trouble uh, you know, bringing the, the them The ones in? who are coming from the mainland will, will only be here three days for the most part. Uh, the monk I told you about, he's here for nine days. Okay. So you might we'll have get somebody. Him. Uh, but he's phenomenal. No, yeah, I'd like to do that very with articulate. you. Yeah. No. If you could but think let, of let who, me think who would through be good. Who else? Yeah. Yeah. But you really, um, you really want to get them on the site. We, we'll find a room for you to work in so there's no ambient sound. Yeah. That's yeah. A problem. Yes, that's important to us. Yeah. 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 So, Roger, we have one minute left. Yep. And that's camera one over there. Can you tell the people of Oahu, and for that matter, the state of Hawaii, uh, why they should you know, come down on May 6th and 7th? It's more fun than any other festival. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a literary agent to put things so succinctly. <laughs> Roger, it's been wonderful okay. talking to you. Thanks I really so enjoy I enjoy whenever we speak, yeah. but I certainly yeah. enjoyed today. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Roger Jelinek, yeah. the uh, operator, the manager of Hawaii Book and Music Festival, coming soon, May 6th and 7th, behind City Hall. Be there, okay?